Hey guys, what is up? It is May 2022 and I wanted to give you guys an update on and a full room tour of what the Jurassic Corner is looking like uh, in 2022. I have acquired a lot of new pieces and rearranged quite a, quite a few stuff. So just kind of wanted to give you guys a look at what's going on before I have to put some stuff away uh, because I am running out of space as you may well know. And uh, let's just get this started. Let's start right here behind. Now I have changed the furniture around a little bit. I did get a lot more of these uh, cube organizers to uh, display pieces on. I had I had this one in the previous video, but I, I actually added one there and a, a smaller one here behind the TV. So I moved the Prime One Studio 1.6 scale Velociraptor uh, over here, right beneath the uh, Jurassic World teaser poster. And uh, most of these boxes now houses uh, all of my girls' toys. So it's kind of keep them hidden, keep dads on display, but put the girls away. Um, so yeah, I put this guy here. He fits really nicely and it totally fits with that poster right behind it. Um, a few of the bonus pieces here and a little museum snow globe there. And uh, this is a new piece I picked up. It's a replica of the T-Rex toe claw from the Stan Winston animatronic. It's very light, it's hollow, uh, painted by friend Alice Wright. Uh, she did an amazing job. So that's a one-to-one -one scale toe now. I don't know what toe it's off, but pretty cool nonetheless. So there is an older Mark Engler poster uh, from The Lost World. Beautiful backdrop. I didn't show that off last time. I had quite a few people asking, but that is a limited poster just like my Jurassic World teaser poster. So let's come over here. This is one of my newest pieces you might have seen if you watched the review. This is the 115 scale Indominus Rex by Prime One Studio. Beautiful piece, absolutely massive. Uh, I think maybe a little bigger than the Spinosaurus or uh, equal, but very big, very awesome piece. Wonderfully sculpted by Steve Juvenville, who actually worked on the animatronics for ILM for Jurassic World. So no one would probably do a better job than he would. So this, this statue depicts the scene where the, the boys run into him in the gyrosphere and the battle between the Indominus and the Ankylosaurus takes place. Uh, one thing I did say in the review about this statue, while I absolutely love the scene and um, the sculpt, the pose, everything's perfect. The paint seems to be lacking a little bit. I really wish they would have went a little lighter because in certain light, this thing kind of looks just really flat. And it doesn't help that the Ankylosaurus is painted in the same color. So it kind of just blends into one uh, flat looking piece. Now, again, it really depends on the type of light it's displayed in because it, it will shine and shimmer in different ways. There are spots like here in the leg that kind of glisten, which give it a nice look. And I, actually in watching the movie back uh, after receiving this piece, I did notice that the Indominus is a slightly darker than I uh, originally remembered. So it's not that far off. I just think it falls a little flat compared to some of the other paint jobs by Prime One. So this again is the first piece I ever bought and moved here now. This is the 115 scale Tyrannosaurus Rex in the breakout scene. Um, I've had to rearrange stuff, so I still have the, uh, the cane still here, Hammond's cane. This is a Matchbox um, die cast Jeep Wrangler. And uh, there's the Tyrannosaurus bonus piece from the Rotunda T-Rex. Here are my Chronicle collectibles prototype goggles. This was the paint test. This is a one half scale goggle set, identical to the original prop, just in a smaller scale. So uh, let's let's start over here. Um, you guys have seen my Raptor, same place. My Mosasaurus hasn't moved. Uh, I don't remember if in that last video I had the Spinosaurus yet, but if I didn't show it off, here it is. Beautiful piece. This is an absolute masterpiece. The paint job, the sculpt is freaking insane. The base too, I still think is one of the best bases I've seen on any Prime One piece. At least when it comes to Jurassic Park, you got the awesome reflective pool there. The muddy jungle floor and the uh, broken apart fuselage with the little seats. And uh, you even got the little footsteps from our characters running off into the jungle. So this is an absolute masterpiece. They only made 250 of these. I was glad to get one before it sold out. 
Uh, Triceratops is down below. Unfortunately, I did have to relocate my uh, router and security system there. Um, so it kind of takes away, but got to do what I got to do. I didn't really show this off last time. At least I don't think this is my work area. And uh, I've added quite a bit of little, little things to here. Uh, this is, oh, don't mind those guys. Uh, this is a uh, replica, well, not a replica, an actual version of the one that was in the film that they used. Um, it's not the actual prop, but, and here are some other pieces you might have seen before. It's a resonating chamber, my Jurassic World name badge. And uh, this was the bonus piece that came with the um, Indominus Rex. Have some replica teeth and claws and a replica one-to-one -one Stan Winston Daddy, can eye. You open the door, please? All right, guys, sorry for the break. My uh, wife and daughter just got home, so pardon any noise you hear in the background. So this is my Namnu Tyrannosaurus Rex I've had for quite a while. Really like that sculpt. Some replica T-Rex teeth from the animatronic, a replica raptor claw. And this is a one-to-one -one replica T-Rex eye from the animatronic. It's not original. It's one of a kind, custom made. Lucky to have that. The Chronicle Collectibles egg and hatchling. And again, you guys have seen my Raptor and Mosasaurus. So let's move on to my dining room table, which is a temporary display for my Stan Winston Studios Horizon pieces. Uh, these were all done by a friend, Alice Wright. Um, she's an incredible painter and uh, sculptor, model builder. And uh, I had always wanted to pick these uh, Stan Winston Studio uh, maquettes up, the Horizon models, but I have no paint skills myself and I didn't know anyone that could paint them, especially that live nearby because shipping these things once uh, completed is not very cheap. So luckily, uh, just by chance, Alice a few months ago moved to the city over from me about 15 minutes away. So that enabled me to finally start getting some of these pieces. And as you can see, they're multiplying fairly rapidly. This is a uh, Horizon Raptor. I believe it's one fifth scale. And I had Alice do it in the theme of the Lost World. I think it came out beautiful. You guys have probably seen my video on that. One I haven't shown yet, a few actually, is this Dilophosaurus that she did, which is freaking incredible. And this is on a custom base, which is actually, um, well, it's not custom, but it's actually used for uh, taxidermy purposes. But she utilized it great for this piece and kind of reposed the Dilophosaurus as if he was going to make a quick turnaround, which is why he's kind of facing down. Actually, the better view is from the bottom here, as you can see. This is a Chronicle Collectibles uh, prototype of the uh, Sick Triceratops that she actually painted for me as well. So not on the Isla Nublar style base that you'd get if you had the Chronicle one, just there by himself, but it helps uh, display it a little easier. You can kind of set him down wherever you want. And the big guy, the Brachiosaurus. Uh, I had a Brachiosaurus you might have seen in the past. I have the Sakuda Hobby Japanese version repainted by Jaroslav. He did a great job, but that one was a toy that had a really bad uh, neck seam right there. So. I wanted to get a Horizon version that has slightly more detail. And when put together right, you don't see those seams. So the newest piece that I've acquired and added to the collection is the Dilophosaurus by Prime One Studio. I actually just got this yesterday and um, I love it. Now, the sculpt is great. Julian Romeo, Romeo um, sculpted this, buddy of mine who does a lot of digital sculpting and is obsessed with Jurassic Park as much as I am, maybe more. He did an incredible job on this piece and uh, I actually pre-ordered this back in, I believe of September of 2020. So it's been about a year and a half. Um, that's how long it takes usually for these pieces to uh, release once they are initially unveiled. Beautiful piece. Now I have nothing but praise for the sculpt. The base is is freaking awesome. This. Um, it's actually like a translucent water. If you shine light through it, it'll start like glowing. It looks really awesome. You got the Barbasol can. Um, one thing on these production pieces is they definitely can do a better paint job. These are uh, mass produced in a sense. I mean, they make a few hundred of them. 
So uh, they're done on a production line. So people working probably aren't paid too much. They're not master painters, but they do a pretty good job getting close to the initial prototype. So I can't complain too much. In person, they always look much better than they do on video or in photos you see online. So don't judge guys just from the initial photos you guys see. A lot of people that put photos up of their statues when they first get them, they're not photographers. They're using a crappy camera phone. They don't know how to angle the light or how to even angle the, the composition of the photo to get the best look. So you'll always hear people say, this looks way better in person, because it's definitely true. I mean, the camera can't capture what our eyes can see. So it really irks me when people just try to bash piece, pieces from pictures when never having seen it in person. So, but you definitely can tell just from looking at it here that Alice's job on hers completely blows it out of the water. I mean, the detail on this is insane. But that's what you get when you get a, uh, you know, a custom made piece by a professional painter. You're definitely gonna get better quality than something you can just buy uh, somewhat off the shelf in one of these statues. But I have no regrets on any of these. I think they're absolutely well done for what they are. And um, I don't think I've ever really been disappointed. The Indominus Rex was probably the only one I felt was kind of lacking in the paint, but the sculpt and size definitely make up for it. And uh, lastly, guys, I wanna show you something I, I've had for a few years and uh, just kind of had tucked away. Some of you guys know I owned one. You see my Matchbox Jeep here, um, the sand beige with the red stripes. I actually have a full-size Jurassic Park Jeep, which I recently brought out of retirement now that Dominion's coming out. You can see there, that is my Jeep number nine. And uh, you'll see it if you follow me on Instagram, I've been posting about it lately. I did have to do a little bit of work on the red paint, but now that it's done, it's back out and I'm driving it around uh, on the daily right now. So that's a lot of fun. I love taking it out, getting a lot of thumbs up, a lot of honks. And uh, it's just fun. Sometimes attention, you know, sometimes you don't want the attention, but overall I love Jurassic Park and I love seeing other people get excited when they see it. So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Let me know if there was anything I missed that you wanna know more about. Uh, maybe I can make another video to cover that. I will be doing a review on the Prime One Studios Dilophosaurus, as well as these Horizon pieces done by Alice. And uh, one thing, if you're wondering what these plates are, these are just some replica plates from Celebrity Machines. The ones on my Jeep that have been there for seven years are a little faded, and they're not too expensive, so I'm going to replace them as soon as I finish this video. All right, guys, so that's it from me today. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys later.